So we can also have local stress rotations with depletion. And, and you know, all of the calculations we've done in this class with respect to well bore stability um, and, and, uh, and well bore and fault stability have been associated with knowing the state of stress, right? And so in this case, it's valuable to estimate what kind of rotation might occur associated with a, uh, a stress rotation that occurs around a, a fault. So if we have an original scenario where this is some fault and these or this is the direction of SH max before it's brought into production, then over time what you can get is very local to the fault you can get these sorts of reorientations. And we'll kind of talk about the mechanisms and estimate what the re reorientation would be. But of course, if you were going to later drill more wells in regions near the fault, uh, then you know, it would be important to understand what these rotations are so that you could do your well bore stability analysis and other things. So uh, I think this is where we're going to miss a lot of the equations, at least in the lecture, in the recorded lecture. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of the, that's the final answer there, but if you, so if you have a, You have a scenario where our lo we'll define our local sort of coordinate system with respect to SH max, and then we have a fault that can be defined by theta, which is theta, where theta is measured as a as a acute angle from SH max, well, SH max is going to, according to, you know, our estimation of how the stress changes, is going to change according to what Zoback calls A, this stress path times the change in pore pressure. Um, likewise, any shear stresses, because remember the shear stresses are proportional to the normal stress, right? You have this, this type of equation, right, for a fault. So any shear stresses on the fault uh, are also going to be modified by A delta P. So so the shear stresses will also be modified by A delta pore pressure. Okay. So if we now write our stress in terms of coordinate system like this, then the S the stress in the X direction is going to be uh, sorry. This is x, this is y. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't see, huh? I'll try to write big. Um. So the stress in the would be SH max minus. A delta pore pressure minus. So this is the this is the how the stress SH max is going to change with depletion. Okay. Minus the component of shear stress in the X direction. Why 
likewise for sh min. I think I said shear stress, I meant normal. Component of normal stress. Okay. And then, so from that, you can have that gamma, where gamma is the angle of stress reorientation. So it's the, it's the gamma is defined as the angle of stress reorientation. So then if you plug in these values into this guy, I'm not going to ask you to derive this or anything. And this is your... This is what you get in the end, where, again, A is this stress path, and Q is defined like this. And so then you can get an estimation of the stress reorientation near the fault. Now, that, uh, that decays pretty rapidly as you move away from the fault. Defined there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's just a uh, it's just a term that shows up in both the numerator and denominator. And if you if you write it like that, then it's just Q, right? And, and you don't have these fractions and fractions. It just makes the equation more compact. It's not a it's not a, you know it just it just comes from if you plug these in to that and you start simplifying, you see it appear there, and so you can just write the equation more compactly. There's nothing. Uh, particularly special about it or anything, but it, I mean it is a it it is the ratio of you know it's it's mod, the the poor pre the change in pore pressure modulated by the difference principal stress difference. Right? So, so if it just there yeah. you have uh, a change in pore pressure that is related to the stress reorientation of the Uh, no, not equals. It just it's sh max as as sh max changes as a function of this according to yeah. I, that's not equals. It just means it it changes it changes proportional to the, to this. Yeah. So. I think I'm going to stop there. I'm just not feeling it without my pen. And I spent like 30 minutes uh, before class. I was, uh, instead of preparing for class, I was trying to mess with my pen. So I'll see you guys Tuesday. No class Thursday. We'll probably have an, an assignment, maybe the last assignment next Tuesday. There's only two more weeks of class, right? And then, uh, uh, no more labs. Did y'all hear that? No more labs. <laughs> These equations are all in the book, too.
There was one without a name on it. That could be me. Okay. Uh, well, it's uh, it's in the stack uh, that's down in the basement of all the assignment threes. Can I look through that? Yeah, if you can find it without the one without the name. On it. Where's the stack? Oh, I mean, it was uh, somebody moved it on the day of. Uh, I had set them outside my door on the day before the exam because I wanted people to be able to get them, and then uh, somebody moved it to the, to the basement somewhere where there's some... The boxes. Yeah, okay. yeah, somebody moved it down there. I was hopeful that somebody would come by and, claim, and pick that up and claim it was theirs. I know what the grade is on it. <laughs> I think the grade was fine. Um, you think you did, it was, something's wrong, or is like some, uh, well, the way the, that I did it, instead of, uh, showing breakout degrees on all points on my graph, mm -hmm. I just set it to a lower value if it was below 30, so my graph looks different, because Okay, well, bring it by, and I'll, I'll okay. yeah, bring it by, and I'll. Well, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be cumulative, but as far as in the, including what we're going to learn over the next two weeks, um, the, the old stuff, you know, beyond what the last test in, in the history will basically be from those tests. So in other words, if I didn't test you on it before, I'm not going to go dig up something obscure. Uh, to, to ask you a question now from the first day of class or something like that. So I think okay. a good way to study would be to, you know, study the previous two exams. Mm. That may take it slow so you have visibility or not. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's the point. I'm not going to go ask something obscure. So, okay. you know, study the types of questions in the scope of the last two exams and then, the, the you know, and then the stuff. new stuff. Okay.